these are three characteristics that are essential for a group to function well. And let me see if I can help um, understand and apply some of these ideas so we can uh, think about our groups, you can think about your own groups, and, and see how you can apply this. Association is an essential characteristic, of course. We need a number of individuals that will get together, that will meet. There is a need for meeting. Now, again, you can have, uh, think about a, 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 any type of a football game. You can a stadium full of people, 20, 30,000 people. They are all together. They, they gather to watch a game. Does that make it a cohesive group? Well, it depends. <laughs> How do you see it? We need to have a structure in, in this association. We need to know when we're meeting. How are we meeting? What is the purpose of this? There is, there is a need for a structure. And with a structure, we're going to talk a little bit later, more detail about this. But the structure also comes some sort of hierarchy, uh, some, some sort of leadership that has to be very clearly stated. Who's who in that process? But people need to know what is it that we're getting into, how that is run. We need to have some regularity. People need to meet with certain frequency, right? And we need to be committed to that frequency. So if we're going to be meeting every week, every Monday, it will be every Monday for these many Mondays. Uh, understanding that sometimes you know things happen and you cannot show up for one meeting, but that's an exceptional thing. It's not the rule. The thing is that you commit. You're committing to this regularity of, of being associated with others, which is also the, something that we're looking for with the small group, with specifically the the, the the connect groups for a summit, and other types of small groups in other places. The fact that we want people to meet with some regularity, that they will have some consistency in that. And that requires commitment, that people will commit. We are going to do this. This is not like a secondary thing. This is not something that I will do if I have time, you know, or if I feel like going. It's something that I will do no matter what, commitment. Working with, um, in, in counseling with people dealing with addictions, one of the things that we find more difficult is to have these individuals that are struggling with whatever to actually commit to meet regularly, to be there, no matter what, no matter how they feel, no matter what is going on in their lives. And one of the adjuncts that we add to any type of, uh, of, of therapeutic process working with addictions is support groups. Um, it could be an AA group or whatever type of group. It's so hard to get them to be consistent with those things. They may go, they may like it, they may see that was incredible and all of that, feel fired up one week and the next week, well, you know, I don't feel like going. Commitment, because commitment is an act of the will, not an act of the emotions. And that's, and that's, that's the point, I think, in many times, uh, that we see many times in, in so much variability and the level of commitment of people. That's one of the things that Hollywood is really good at promoting, by the way. I mean, you see the marriages in Hollywood. They are based on passion, not in commitment. It's, it's not an act of the will. It's an act of passion most of the time. Well, not only them. We see that on so many places. But if we can commit and we can decide, even if I feel or not feel, I will go ahead and pursue this because it's my word. I will do it. Um, this has changed, but growing up as a Latino and growing up in my country with my father, and I remember, th I remember this clearly. As I, one of the things that I always notice about him is that he will say, when I give my word, that goes, no matter what. He actually got offended if somebody will ask him to sign up a paper. He, he will say, you know, you're not trusting me. You don't know who I am. I will, I will do whatever it takes. And, he, and I saw that all the time, very consistent. No matter what, he will not eat. To, to do whatever he promised he was going to do. Commitment. Um, not based on how he felt, but based on his word. The fact that I promised I did it. We need to communicate this in so many different ways as we are trying to get people to associate in these groups and encourage people. One of my fears, and I am not saying this based on regroup because I haven't been in, in meetings in, in, in regroup uh, lately, but in general, I think one of the problems that the church sometimes has is that the church is too careful 
And we ask people, you know, to gather, to meet, but we put it in a way as, you know, if you feel like it, if it is okay, if, if it is convenient to you, as if we're afraid that if we push too much, we're actually going to push people away. And, and I think there is a balance in that. We cannot force people to do things. That's not, you know, our deal. But at the same time, we cannot be you know, so loose, so flexible that then people don't feel like we have a level of urgency. There is a need. There is a level of urgency in meeting, coming to services, coming to regroup meetings, coming to whatever we think is valuable. There is a, there is a level of urgency. This world is falling apart, and we believe that we have the solution, the answer to that. There is urgency to that. But we need to find a way that is very well balanced as we communicate that sense of urgency. So we invite people to commit.